Hey everybody, welcome into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint. It is a beautiful day in Columbus, Ohio, and the off date is over. The mid-season break. It's done. Did everybody have a great one? Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Bill Landis, I'm Austin Ward. What do we all do? Five weeks are on the feed. Watched mm-hmm. a lot of college football. Not a lot. Yeah, a lot of college football. For my kids, the boys. On high the school volleyball. Camp out, watch some high school football. Saw Bobby Hoing, his daughter's like a beast at oh, yeah. Watterson there. He's got some talented, talented kids, man. Yeah, no doubt. Strong genetics. Absolutely. So, did that, enjoyed it. Bill, I think he's asking. Look at this. Look at look at the, this. Is the great this service is, staff? Thank you so they much. They don't play around. They don't stop. That's right. They don't stop. Um, but you know, it's a good weekend. Bye weekends are undefeated. Uh huh. You know, I mean, got to watch team up north play a little decent game. Poor James Franklin. I mean, they're just <laughs> poor James Franklin poor, and his yeah. sixty-five million dollar. I mean, they're just not. Mm. Everyone's like, hire Matt Rule. I'm like, yeah, if you got someone out there that's willing to write out, write a sixty million dollar <laughs> yeah, check. check. You know what? They could have done that. If they hadn't been duped into giving him a contract extension, he was going to go no to LSU. Reason. No, he wasn't. Or USC. <laughs> no. Or he somewhere. Tr- yeah, he he's going to go somewhere else. He desperately yeah, he wanted, wanted to. to. Like, James Franklin really wants to leave, and Penn State needs him to leave. And then they're like, you know what? Let's just stay together for the kids. <laughs> for the but kids. The kid, the kid, kids. It always works kids, out well. But did the kids want it, though? That's the thing. Like, I don't well, feel the transfer like portal a, says no. A lot of the. Well, they, you know, they're doing all right. They're recruiting. The recruiting class was really good this year. I mean, they did a good job putting it together. And Drew Aller, they've got a good young quarterback. Clifford, on it's not Clifford. Their old line's just bad. Like, Clifford yep. played pretty well. You know, defensively. you got to be able to protect for him, though, because he's 85 my, years old. He's been playing hey, that's That scramble we had was <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm just kidding. But, no, he is older. I mean, yeah, no, he's been there for a long time. If, you know. they had, if they had a competent offensive line, because their running backs are good, like, they mm-hmm. have pretty much the receiver core look pretty good to me. I mean, I don't think they're the best in college football, but like, you know, defensively they're okay. They gave up a couple of those long runs, obviously, to Quorum and Edwards. But you know, I enjoyed it, man, sitting there watching your old boys, Rocky Top. Mm. You'll always be that? home sweet home to me, just fired up. I, mean, I, think they, I, I think I did predict them to win that game. I took a listen. I took them. People are like hammer bam on the minus nine. Oh, like, no, you're, that's you're a drunk. Lot. I had to listen to Stephen A. Smith <laughs> tell me last week against AM, bam, a minus 23, hammer it all day. I'm like, dude, they're not that good. Offensively, they can run the ball. But they're not – like, the only reason they scored that many, the defensive score late. Mm-hmm. If not, Tennessee – I mean, Tennessee can score in three plays, like yeah. legit. They, they're, they're receiving core and offense. Reminds me very similar to Ohio State. They actually kind of remind me of Ohio State last year where they're really good at scoring, but they have some other deficiencies that eventually I think it's will gonna get It's going to catch them, them eventually. Yeah. Yes. That's why I say, like, it doesn't even have to be Georgia for them. It can – they can, they can be tripped It could be up. Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, like, Probably. another team that finds a way to slow them down and can score a little bit, maybe in trouble. Probably will be. Bill, um, we have to – the SEC game doesn't really matter what we're talking about. I thought last week that someone would have to be revealed as legit in Michigan, Penn State, and that turned out to be Michigan. I'll give them credit for that. But some of the other stuff, like the Penn State offensive line thing Bobby brought up, that's not new. That's been going on for a decade with James Franklin. It has. Uh, we'll, we'll talk SEC because I took the Vols money line. So oh, that worked hey, out. So hey, all right. What Big was, weekend. What was the juice on that you're getting? I can't even remember. What do you he mean? Got you so can't remember? <laughs> he got so rich. He got so He celebrated. He was spraying champagne everywhere. <laughs> so like, pick it, him wasn't, up this it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. a significant enough bet for me to spray the champagne. Oh, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that was surprising from from Penn State. Uh, that's the offensive line's been the story of the program. Since James Franklin got there, and and to be fair, he inherited a mess, but he's not really made it much better. Um, they just got pushed around. I, I thought their defensive line too uh, was not as as stout as I expected oh. it to be, and I don't I don't know um, like the history of Manny Diaz defenses, but it really looked like he was willing to sacrifice being sound in the name of just throwing bodies at Michigan, and it didn't really do anything because they were just getting gashed up front the entire game. So um, just a real lack of physicality from Penn State with, that was shocking. I don't know what it means for two weeks because Penn State's looked like this before and then for some reason still plays Ohio State really well. Um, so we'll see what that looks like, um, I guess, on October 29th. But uh, Michigan looks legit, I think. Maybe not quite as good as last year, but but a real team for sure. Um, you know, I think Manny Diaz – Part of it, and I haven't watched a ton of him. I watched a lot when he was obviously in Miami. Um, tend to, you have a tendency, I think, as a, as a D coordinator or as any coach, like if you feel like you're outmatched, mm-hmm. you're going to probably do things because you know just standing there and playing playing base. If we go, man, if we go head up on these guys, it's going to be we bad. Can't, we can't yeah, do it. So we'll be aggressive. Hopefully they don't find our find you know areas yeah. the flaws that yeah, we're hiding. Spot. Hopefully we can make a couple big plays and you get them in a third and seventeen and feel like okay then we can maybe get off the field. But I I think that watching Penn State probably was a little bit of their strategy. 
they knew that Michigan really couldn't throw the ball down the field. So if they can find a way to get a negative yardage play here or there, you get them behind the chains. JJ might they'll throw you one now. I mean, he'll take like a 16 yard sack and he'll do mm-hmm. some bad things. So I think that was their, you know, goal was hey, if we we're gonna we understand we're gonna give up a couple long runs, but if on the other drives we can get them backed up, get them behind the chains, maybe we can steal possession, get a turnover. And you know they did. And the the fact that they had a lead in that game, like in the second quarter, is kind of crazy. They live yeah. in the third quarter. Too, the third right? quarter, yeah, they had the field goal. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that would they have a long kickoff return or long, uh, long run or like pack? Like, they got down inside, and they obviously couldn't score because their offense was terrible once they yeah. got inside the five. <laughs> but they had an opportunity. And I mean, I'm James Franklin. Forget kicking the field goal, dude. I'm like, you could feel where that game was. Yeah, on the road, you got to go. You're inside the five yard line. You got to get points. Like, touchdowns. Well, not if you have a $65 million buyout. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> he still is a proud you man. You could punt it on a three yard line and still be employed <laughs> just, on Monday. Just, of boot that, yeah. just boot that ball out of, out of the stadium. Who cares? Listen, hey, he's still a proud guy. He has to go there, answer uh, questions. He's got to listen. He's got to find. He's got to make sure that he is veer, still revered as a competent enough head coach that when he does get fired and gets that, gets that buyout, he can get another job. <laughs> Saban will bring him in as an analyst. Yeah, it'll be easy. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> they can just make a trade for Bill O'Brien. Bring right back, now. bring Billy back? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I, I was going to say, you look at this and the other things that happen around the country, you know, how it impacts Ohio State or doesn't impact Ohio State, they're going to be favored in every – Game for the next six weeks, regardless, and and then seven. If now we're talking about the potentially of Illinois and Indy, yeah. Uh, my hey, goodness, tell you what they might be the Bert's third. Got them they going, might be boy. the third best team in the Big Ten. I think 10. they are. Defense yeah. is pretty good. If Purdue, I think they, yeah, they got to be right. If Purdue <laughs> wouldn't have crapped themselves earlier. Uh, who did they lose to? The, the Penn State game that they choked away. Well, not that, but then they lost to. Uh, they mm, lose to Minnesota. Maryland. Maryland was that was who Maryland? Was? Yeah. yeah, I mean they had a chance. You know, they were because I think Purdue is a decent squad. They just lost that lost to Maryland. They shouldn't have the Penn State game. Like you're losing to Penn State opening week of the season, mm-hmm. not a terrible loss. But the other, the Maryland one that that's the one that sticks out. So how does this team, Ohio State's off there? We're practicing, focusing solely on itself. They want to do that week in and week out, and nameless, faceless opponents. Mm, but if they look right. ahead and like, well, the only the only team that can really pose a test is the last week of the regular season. Like, how do you? That's got to be difficult for this team to fight off the complacency because now you know Penn State, their weaknesses don't line up very well against Ohio State's strengths. Uh, I know it's on the road, and that's going to be a challenge, although it's not at night and it's not a whiteout. Like how, how will this team really manage that, I think, for the rest next five weeks? until the game? That's got to be hard, I mean, but they have a lot of practice doing so, yeah. right? I mean, being in the Big Ten the last 20 years, um, <laughs> I mean, it just feels like they've been favored in most of the games that they've played. But, uh, you know, especially now, we're on a different level, I think. And it's just, you know, I think Ryan will tell you, each, each game we just got to go out and play our best game, take care of what we can. I, th- I think Penn State will still be a tough game. Um, you know, once you get a loss like that, I, I think it happened to us a few years ago. And we, we lost and we went up to Michigan State, I think, right? And it was just like, man, these guys played like a whole different ball game because like that weight was off their shoulder, yeah. you know, of not having to be perfect all the time. Not that Penn State has that feeling, but – <laughs> they got. They had a big game. They lost. Now you know it, it's still going to be a tough game over there on the road. I don't care if it's at night or not. It's going to be loud in that place. It could be a little sneaky. Uh, you know, you, you got to play that up as a coach, right? Ryan Day is going to. We're just we're just looking and, past the Hawkeyes this weekend. Well, oh yeah. Well, have you seen I, them I play? I have. I don't. I don't mean to say. <laughs> it I don't way, expect CJ to give too many pick sixes away they didn't, well, this weekend. Didn't get rid. That's of the only way they score during the off date. So the nepotism laws haven't been enforced yet. What did they? I saw this awesome tweet that said Ryan Ferentz isn't going to go, isn't going to a Halloween party because he didn't want to be offensive. <laughs> like he isn't dressing up for Halloween because he didn't want to be offensive. It was amazing. It was a great little deal of him walking. Um, sure. Yeah. I would say you this. Talk about Iowa. You I think there's. Well, I think there's different tests within every game. Are you worried about losing to Iowa? No, but I will say this: Iowa's defense is pretty good. Their yeah, run defense is really good. And so this is something. If you've watched Ryan and what he's done in these games. Like they've stuck with the run and leaned into it a lot more. When he could have thrown the ball and scored, you know, seventy-five points in all these games if he wanted to. Right. They're leaning into the run. I would imagine this week, yeah, they could go throw it and score uh, seventy points. But can we run it on these guys? Because they are good up front. Because you know we're going to be playing teams like Georgia, like you know, Bama, Clemson, whoever Michigan. these. Uh, Michigan. I mean, yeah, I mean, 
teams that have good run defenses, are we good at running the ball? We think we are. We've been we have better to, this year. We've been yeah. better, but we have to stay with it and continue to work on that toughness. And I feel like that he's going to find something. There's there's elements of all these teams that are good at a certain area. Sure. And, like, let's lean in and try to be great at what they're great at. And that's the only real test you can get. Like, Penn State, you know, they've, they've got some explosive running backs. No big plays. Like, that's the one thing Penn State, as we saw last week, they can get some big plays. Like, don't let them have any big plays. So that'll be, like, the defensive test that week. We'll figure some other stuff out for – Indiana and <laughs> North, Northwestern will just be, you know, can you, can you measure oh, the length of the grass? I don't you know. know. I think Indiana, you don't want to run the ball too well because Indiana's like, oh, this Justin Fry guy. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe he can be our head coach. <clears throat> no, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's right. They're in danger there. <laughs> Uh, but Maryland, no, no test at all because Mike Loxley's their coach. So. Maybe bring, uh, and maybe bring Kevin, hurt, right? bring uh, Kevin a, Wilson back. No, to a Tito there. I, uh, I don't. Kevin Wilson's gonna have to get in line behind Justin Fry this time. It's <laughs> good. Maybe he'll bring. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect. Go together. Co-head coaches. Hey, co-head coaches. Yes, that would be fantastic. Co-coordinators. Why don't they have co-head Tight coaches? Ends and offensive line. That would work. Um, we know that the Iowa offense poses no threat whatsoever for Ohio State, right, Bill? Like, yeah. I mean. What can they weird, do? If it, I mean, it's just a weird matchup. I don't. I I really enjoyed last week when uh, I don't know who it was was asking Brian Ferentz about their quarterback situation and, <laughs> and potentially benching Spencer Petrus in favor. Was it that's Alex Padilla right yeah, as the backup? Uh-huh. And uh, Brian Ferentz said, "Well, what's <laughs> the question? The was, question was, what's the downside of benching, benching Spencer Petrus?" And Brian Ferentz said, "Well, what's the upside? <laughs> the answer is, I don't know. Better quarterback. <laughs> like, maybe, he, maybe he's seen something. In yeah, Pierre. he's seen something where he's just like, uh-uh, we can't put him out there. A little bit of like, it couldn't possibly be worse. That's the no, key. no, it couldn't. I, I, yeah, he I guess, played last year. I yeah, thought played and he okay. did some good things. Yeah, I guess that speaks to the, the dire situation there uh, in, in Iowa City. But yeah, I don't." Short of CJ giving Iowa the ball inside the Ohio State twenty yard line, which is seemingly Iowa's best offensive play, um, I I don't really see how it's close. It's it's twenty seven points, which maybe is a little closer than people might expect, given the state of the two teams. But it's still projected like forty to ten or something like that. So I think that's probably in the area that it finishes. I, I don't Iowa's defense is very good, but I also can't get out of my head just how much like Michigan steamrolled them last year in the Big Ten championship. So. I think part of that is just who Iowa plays on a week-to-week basis. Helps you look really good. Right. Uh, when they play these teams with much better athletes, I'm not sure the defense stacks up quite the same. I want to ask Bob, because I feel like when we played Iowa back in the day, it was just a basic defense, right? They, they didn't never, do anything. They, they would always put, a, line, they'd put yeah. a linebacker on Conzo out in the slot and mm-hmm. just get torched all day long, but they wouldn't change. I mean, I know you haven't watched a ton Her, of them, but I mean, is it the doesn't same? doesn't want to change anything. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, is it the same? I mean, what do they do? Same, same philosophy. Yeah, I mean, same they philosophy, used to play right? quarters. They didn't really yeah. blitz. Mm-hmm. You know, it's similar. They're they're a little more multiple now than what they were, but on the relative, I guess offenses have changed since. Yeah, I mean, you cannot play three linebackers to eleven personnel and ten personnel consistently anymore. They're too good, so they they do change up and they'll do that. But I mean, this is an Iowa team. Like defensively, I would say they're a lot like Wisconsin. I mean, they have dudes in the NFL at all three levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put linebackers in. Yep. Desmond King won the won the Thorpe. He stole the Thorpe, but he well, did he, win it. he did win it. I mean, they <laughs> voted for him, and he did get it. Um, so I mean, they've got that's the that's the same you know approach that's going to be taken where an Ohio State won't win the Big Ten Receiver of the Year award. This mm-hmm. year. Of course, yeah. then Ryan Day won't get or head coach of the yeah the coach of the year. I mean, anyway. can, whatever happens, yeah, but that's sorry. so like they, they're going to have the, like players, but I don't think they have as many as what they've had in the past. Like it's the same thing as Wisconsin. You know, Wisconsin historically has had some dudes. And this year they just don't really have those elite guys, yep. and I don't think Iowa really has those quote elite guys. They have some, they have some NFL guys over there. They're a better situ- It's a better situation in Wisconsin, but I don't think it's like markedly better than what we've seen. All right, let's put the focus uh, directly on the Buckeyes. Then just a couple, you know, three practices last week. Let them get out of town, have some fun. <laughs> Seems like they got through that uh, in one piece. We haven't had to, you know, report on anything or through any other off the field. <laughs> Which is always a big part of the weekend. So you, you knock on wood when we try and have fun on our off date as well. We don't have to do any work because I could not have done that on Saturday night in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so some Roosters, Buckeye leaves. Who do you think needed to make the most of those practices last week and then to get ready for Iowa? I will start because I didn't tell you guys at all that this is what I was going to do <laughs> for, for Buckeye leaves. And I'll, I will say I've written – I was going through the numbers – well, it's got to be the cornerbacks, right? That's the position that we've talked the most about. They're not winning these 50-50 balls. Uh, there's a weakness on this team that can cost them. That's got to be it. Well, it turns out 
I was my eyeballs are telling me one thing, and the numbers are saying that this is the number eight pass defense in the country. Yeah, that's what everybody they gave 183 yards. <laughs> yeah, last week. everybody looked like, oh, they're so terrible. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's pretty give up 183. Yeah, yards. It's, not that bad. it's pretty good, and <laughs> there's some penalties in there, which yes, there are changed the numbers too. So it's been, and that's why I say I, I use that, and then I looked at some of the other services that grade PFF. We can take it with a grain of salt. They had them at number 27 in terms of their pass coverage grades. Seem to be more in line with what I was thinking than number eight. But it doesn't matter. Take take one of those, take one of these, and then your eyeballs and say, well, can they get better? I think they will. And that will start with just being able to practice. Cameron Brown was on pitch counts throughout August and then had a two-week deal with a concussion where he wasn't able to practice. Denzel Burke hurt his shoulder in the middle in a scrimmage early on. Mayan Williams trucked him. He had to miss some practice time. And then you – Is that you know, public? Uh, well, it is now. And then he had the hand issue. It was a shot, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've seen what Mayan Williams can yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, he does so it to everybody, right? Yeah. It was a shot. <laughs> you got to make a business decision in training. Because <laughs> yeah. um, we've seen Denzel Burke do that other times in games that actually count. Um, <laughs> so, so maybe that's why you feel like the pass defense is bad. But I, I, like these guys. Our main I'm, guy. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is they need to practice. They needed to practice. Mm-hmm. They needed to be healthy enough to do it. Jordan Hancock uh, haven't. You know, he didn't have an opportunity to do that at all. Wasn't playing after getting hurt in the first scrimmage in training camp. So these guys are good enough to do it. And the numbers are already suggesting that they are. Um, and now if you actually get an opportunity to get into a rhythm in the second half of the year, stay, get healthy, stay healthy, I think that was the most meaningful part of the off date for Ohio State. So those would be my Roosters Buckeye leaves for the criteria that I just made up. Uh, I'm going to give mine to Travion Henderson. Okay. You need to get healthy. My Williams. <clears throat> yeah. you know, that's what, yeah, that week was a lot. Of yeah, them, I mean, right? that's a lot of those guys, especially guys that are running backs. Jackson Smith and Jig would get, you know, another week off where he can yeah. kind of work his way back. You know, but the running backs, I think especially, because that's, that's a thin room. Like, it was a really thick room for a while. A lot of girth, <laughs> yeah. you know, there. And then we lost. It's Evan. hard to sustain, Bob. Well, it is. It is it hard. Is. And we lost, you know, lost Evan Pryor. He goes out. I mean, the question is, I mean, who will be back first? Evan Pryor, Jordan Hancock. We're working on that. I mean, that's. The money, I think the, the uh, favorite uh, favorite is Jordan Hancock in the yeah. clubhouse, but that this we're approaching Marshawn Lattimore stand uh, status with that hamstring. You know, yeah. Hammy, we got to get get him back out there because like, he's a good player. They need all that, mm-hmm. but I think uh, for all those guys, like when you don't have a game, you can kind of focus on getting those guys healthy. They can go through some stuff, and the coaches aren't overwhelmed with game prep, so they can kind of start working through some things. Working with Adam Stewart, the elite physical therapist. Um, at Ohio State and Sean Barnhouse, that whole crew over there, what they do. So, I mean, that's that's it for me. I mean, really, it's the two running backs because those guys have got to be horses because I know Ryan wants to continue to run the ball. And as much as I think he enjoys getting, you know, Xavier Johnson, like running some full yeah, and stuff, read, and all that stuff, like, hey, he has 22 personnel that he's shown to be able to deploy. As much as I love Xavier, I don't know if you're sitting there and getting in like a full eye power, an eye backfield and hammering the football like that. Seems unlikely. But you never know. Yeah, we yeah. can't say for sure. Jay Z. Well, I, mean, I was going to go with mine or you know JSN just because it was another week. Yeah, take JSN. Um, he can be you. I don't know if he's going to play this week. Though. I haven't heard anything on him coming back. I thought maybe after the bye week was their kind of their idea of getting him back on the field. So Ryan had said was trending to that, fully but it also might be, be, hey, we don't need you again this week. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and push that off another week? Um, the, the timeline for recovery and everything that I've been told by people directly involved was that Iowa would be the date, the target date. Yeah. There, there hasn't really been any hemming and hawing over that from Ryan day. If it, he doesn't talk specifically about the injuries, but they basically everything is on track for that. They thought there was a chance that he, if it, if it had been the national championship game mm-hmm. two weeks ago at Michigan state, that Jackson could have played in that. But game. It was just Michigan state, but it was just, it was just <laughs> Michigan state, <laughs> which so is wild, to, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, the, but so it's, it's not even him as much. I think mine's probably the bigger, Part of that, um, just Definitely having him help. Much I mean, well, I know, but I'm just saying. You you were talking about how thin that room is now, and Trey is always you, not not always. Last year he was a little banged up, had some issues. Yep. This year he's there's again. You need mine, the workhorse who can go in and bang around yep. and and stay in the game and stay healthy. Just because there's really not that depth there. So I, bye week, everybody. Nobody got arrested. That's how I'm all in on that boy. Uh, that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's, big, that's, 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 that's a real deal. <laughs> CJ. I mean, as bad as it sounds, it's a real deal. You give these, you know, these guys time to go back to their places where they, you know, get back with their groups of friends, and so many of them stupid now, things can happen. So many of them now stay here. It's yeah. not like uh, like we would get out, go. I mean, 
it's a little bit different. Like everybody likes it around here so much. I mean, Ryan's created a great atmosphere of competitive stamina. You know, that's they've worked on that. But I mean, also you know, with Urban, I think it was so intense that people were like, like, man, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'm crying as I go back on Sunday. I don't want to go back. My joke with some of the guys like it's important to just go somewhere and see a different face. Like yeah. see some different people. Now, don't go anywhere, the Bill Parcells mantra. Don't go anywhere you're unknown or unwanted. <laughs> um, but it is important to get out of there, like, whether it's going home. Like, just the change of scenery for a weekend to psychologically, like, refresh yourself. Decompress a little bit. Right? Yeah. Bill and I were, were talking to you know, CJ Hicks uh, about a week ago. Like, what are you going to do? You're, he doesn't have that far to go home. He's like, I don't know. I think I just want to stay. Hit the streets you know, up. Just See what these streets are like just, in Columbus. Just left me. Like, I want to be. He's going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I think I <laughs> probably went down to Jeff Ruby's, got a nice meal. Well, this, you know. Well, it's easier now, right? I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They <laughs> got know, a whole, you can have a pretty good there's time. There's so much more right yeah. in front of them here that's in Columbus right. nowadays. The thing is, all those guys, though, now, like you said, they've got a little cat, a little coin in their pocket working for the city, head up to the Moon Tower, <laughs> you know, yeah. on my weekend. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. But that's like joking <laughs> with Tommy and Kate and all those guys. And, and, uh, uh, steel, like, no, just gonna sit in their room and look at each other and then go work out and uh, <laughs> get gonna play a silent game Watch. of euchre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no table talk. I wonder there, if they, yeah. no table talk. Do they have like hand signals? We still have to find out. We're, we were promised that we could go see these games of euchre and perhaps participate in some way. You go like, to that because if they don't say any words, like. How are they calling spades? Exactly. Like, like, I put I put the knife at the twelve o'clock. Position. Just throw the jack down. All right. I guess yeah. that's it. It's like the yeah. cards on the sideline yeah. for defense. They hold <laughs> they, them. They have, a, they have a wheel up there and they just point to it. Uh, oh, what's this stuff? Oh, that's. Oh, what is that? Wow, why don't you tell oh, the my, folks listening and watching? You stumbled upon this. Oh, you know, out here on the table. Well, after a week off, people may have been confused, but mm. there's twelve games. That means twelve winners. Oh, that means twelve what? pairs of tickets. The QR code right here. Zoom all the way in, or you go to roosterswings.com. You can register for the Roosters Bowl Prize giveaway. Mm -hmm. 12 lucky winners. What do they get? Oh, hold on. Oh, my bad. My bad. I jumped. 12 lucky winners. So we've already had six. Bye week was the off. We've got six more opportunities. And the good news is now you know you're winning something because the Buckeyes are bowl eligible at six and oh. So they've got six wins. Outback Bowl. Here we come. 12 winners, 24 (laughs) tickets. That's 12 pair. Airfare, deluxe hotel, deluxe hotel accommodations, accommodations to the Buckeye Bowl game. Plus, mm. you're going to get some Rooster swag, and there's other cool prizes. So, RoostersWings.com. Get on. Who are the registered? The official wing sponsor of Ohio State Athletics. Love that. And they also sponsor the Roosters Buckeye Leaves. And Bill is the last one to jump in here. And I know he's been cooking up something good. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I think I'm going to give it to the offensive line. Oh, I know, I know you're shocked to hear that. Uh, like they've, that. they've played... Um, very well to this point. I think maybe you can make a case for being the best offensive line in the country. They're a little banged up in spots. I know you were asking about Matt Jones last week and his foot. And Justin Fry was like, listen, they're playing offensive line in the Big Ten. Everyone's got something they're dealing with. So right. I think all five of those guys could benefit from the rest too. But when they, when they come back from this, the, the challenges are going to be stiffer. Like it's Obviously, Iowa, as Bobby mentioned, is pretty good up front. Uh, Penn State, even though they got steamrolled, I think will be a difficult challenge. Obviously, Michigan. Um They've been kind of on cruise control, I think, the last few weeks. Um, they've answered the bell when they've had to. Notre Dame, for sure. Um, I think rocking Wisconsin the way they did still still means something. But it's going to be more challenging moving forward. So a refresh for them in terms of just getting healthy, but then also maybe uh, settling into the proper mindset that they're going to need to run the football down the stretch here because they, they weren't able to do it last year, and they have to do it this year. Do you think Justin Fry will seriously consider my advice that Matt Jones stop wearing the clown shoe? <laughs> I think it might help him, yeah. <laughs> if, he has, if he has to keep running off the field to get a shoe fixed, maybe just wear the correct size. Yeah, it's not really working out that well. Okay, so uh, Berm is waiting in the wings. He's going to come in. Bill is already filling in for Nicole, and then Berm is going to fill in I feel in like for Berm, Berm is kind of like Matt Foley yeah. on the show. Like, he's s- set you back a couple bucks, but he's down in the basement. He's had about 12 cups, cups of coffee, so uh, I think he's We're going to bring him up. He doesn't. There is no river by his house, and he doesn't live in a van yet. So I mean, when you grow up, but he lives. He lives by the the Detroit River, I think. <laughs> the Detroit River, yes. The mighty Detroit. The, the, the mommy, say. actually. The how mommy, far is the yeah. mommy from you? Hey, fifteen men. There you go. Fifteen men. You could go down there, live in a van. I slept in a van this weekend, so I mean, that sounds like a good off date. That's a good story. <laughs> no, uh, was, my back was so bad I couldn't yes. sleep in the tent. Oh boy, <laughs> it just just gets better. Okay, Nicole from <laughs> tent to the. <laughs> yeah, Nicole sent her a score, Nicole in, right? Sent her we pick. have a prediction. She said 52 to 10. Now, she did not say 
Who's going Who's to win? win? Oh. If there was ever a chance that Iowa could score 52 <laughs> points this year. I, I suspect that she meant Ohio State 52. Have they scored 52 combined yet? I don't think so. That's a <laughs> it's going to be question. close. Yeah, I think it's going to be real close. They only have seven offensive touchdowns this year. Sounds right. Yep. I, I think Marvin yeah, I That's 49. Closer. Yeah. I so, think Marvin Harrison so they're over. has nine and Iowa has seven. <laughs> Isn't that like, the updated tally? <laughs> it's insane. Uh, um, all right, 52 to 10, Nicole has. What have you cooked up for Monday? Knowing that you'll probably have like six more opportunities to change it. Yeah, I think I'm at like thirty eight to seven right now. I, I I do not think it's gonna be a kind of game where Ohio State scores every time it has the ball like it has been for the last few weeks. I, I respect Iowa's defense a little more than that, but um not to the point where it's gonna be close to being a game. I think Ohio State still wins comfortably and uh Probably the only way Iowa scores is if something weird happens. Well, I don't know, a fumble return for a touchdown or something like that. They're certainly not going to score on offense. A muffed punt. To Keep an eye on those game. Ohio State special teams. Oh, right, right. Did not bring up for our off date. They're getting the discussion. Buckeye leave because Parker got them right. We're ready to go. They're, they're ready. Okay, <laughs> we're ready we'll, to go. We'll dig into that in the second half of the show. Bill's going to tag out. Berm's going to tag in. We're going to be right back into a fun casual joint here at Roosters. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back in to Roosters in the Horseshoe Lounge. It's Berm. Hey, guys. hey. He's back. How was your off date? Wonderful. Why do you seem so subdued? You've over there. You've crushed uh, because like I had, four I, pots of coffee. I had, I had like, the type of week that you just need to, you know, decompress. And the week was nice and calm. I only had to drive to Columbus once. So how that nice was nice. that? Uh, so that was good. Um, you know, watched a lot of football. I'm glad you didn't spend that extra here. time shaving. No, no, screw that. <laughs> Not wasting my time doing that. No, who does? Yeah, stupid waste of time. Loser. He's getting time. ready for Halloween. Yeah, just like Jay Z. Yeah. Going as Jay Z. <laughs> going as Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> That's well done. So, what was the what was the best uh, thing that you saw on Saturday? <laughs> the best thing that I saw on Saturday was um, a shocking lack of defensive like wherewithal and execution from Alabama that I mm-hmm. I could not imagine. I've Wait, I've never seen Alabama. multiple three drive three play drive touchdowns. I mean, yeah, they were just in the saving era. You could probably uh, count those on. You know, you try to like project forward, and you think about the Ohio State offense against the. And if that's what Tennessee is able to do, that's very encouraging. Uh, they did not seem to have any idea what they were doing defensively against Tennessee. Like, I mean, they spread you out. They do a lot of stuff. They were stacking. Josh Heupel's receiver. a good coach, yeah. but but there was nothing like totally exotic about what oh. they were doing. They were just flat out running by guys in the secondary, and nobody was covering them. So uh, that was the shocking thing. And I, I I tweeted it during the game. Like, I don't remember a Bama team looking that undisciplined in my entire life of watching them under Nick Saban. So um, that was somewhat concerning. I feel like there's something percolating in Tuscaloosa that isn't great uh, as far as... Why are you concerned about that? That seems like it's a good thing for everyone else. I mean, I just, I'm just i just commenting on it. It just looks like a team that doesn't seem to be clicking um, culturally, I guess, right now. Mm. And that's, of course, just watching it f- very far, you know, outside I'm looking sorry. in. But I don't know. Nick seemed pretty uh, zoned in and... Yeah, I don't, think that's a, I don't think it's a problem with him. I think it's a problem when you have... He looked pretty frazzled, actually. That's what I was joking. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think Burr missed it. I wanted to yeah. say, <laughs> that guy looked out of sorts. Like, he knows that there's something yeah, wrong. I, I think he doesn't know what to do yeah. about it. I think there's something... The NIL era is going to change things for teams around the country. And for coaches, and that's why we've talked about Urban, like, there's no way he's coming back to coach college football ever because you have lost the ability to lord over people. Uh, in the locker room, overlord. The way that I, I think some old school coaches and that old school coach mentality uh, wants to do. So to me, that was the thing on Saturday. I was just stunned at how bad Alabama's defense was. It's the interesting part about that for this season's particular is like because of that loss, how bad they looked defensively. Because of the fact that we know there was a Bryce Young available against Texas and they should have lost that, they have no benefit of the doubt. Just like oh, it's Nick Saban team, put him in the playoff. I mean, if, if they win out, they're in, and that's yeah. that's well, that's fine. Well, it's because they if, beat Georgia. But in if the, they're a one-loss right. team, and then they beat Georgia or a rematch against Tennessee in the SEC 
Championship oh, game. Look at you. Now. I mean, it's possible they're undefeated. It's, that's typically how it goes with Alabama Georgia, right? They, they play like, and then okay, they both then get can, in. Sure, you can win out, but like, what what did we see from Alabama through the first half of the season or on Saturday that would be like, well, that's a playoff. I team. know that's. Not, I don't. If they played as good as Georgia's been playing, like, and I know they've had some ups and downs too, but I, I can't imagine the game. It'll be different in how it looks as far as structurally. But I can't imagine them slowing down Georgia all that much. And Georgia's defense is far better than Tennessee's. Right. So, I mean, that's, they play a different sport. Yes. Yeah, so they've, <laughs> they've got some dudes up there that are legit. So, I mean, watching Philadelphia, what's the nose guard from? Uh, Jordan Davis. Jordan. Jordan. I mean, like, he is a monster in the NFL. And they've got dudes like him down there. I mean, I, if Bama can't run it, then they're really in trouble, which I don't know if they'd be able to run it against Georgia. Well, I think we talked about this last week. What are the outcomes like? Who is who could Ohio State if they handle their business? They're going to be a favorite in every game for the rest of the year. Like, what are the playoff matchups going to be like? Who are the teams that start paying attention as you get into the second half? I think that outcome was pretty much ideal for the rest of the country to say yeah. there won't be two SEC teams this season. Uh, I could <clears> see <throat> this yeah. if they lose to Georgia. I could see Tennessee, depending on how the rest of it looked. USC just lost. Clemson. It would it would be really on what Clemson and the Big Twelve do. But I think TC will lose. I don't think TCU is an elite team. I think they're good, but they're not that good. They would. I mean, if you were to put those two teams in the championship game and have the same type of game, but Alabama won, do they both get in? I think they both get in. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, obviously, if Tennessee, they have to beat Georgia to get there. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, they would both be trending upward, but if they go and have another three point ball game, but Alabama makes the kick this time, I I I think they both would. I'm so like sullied by the whole process that I I don't see any way they don't put two SEC teams in. Just because that's how it seems to happen every year. I mean, my thing is like if if Tennessee loses a close one to Georgia and then Georgia boat races Bama in the championship or beats them by 10, I think Tennessee, unless there's like another great viable option, which I don't foresee gets in. And I honestly could foresee a scenario that if there's enough clutter that goes on in the ACC and SEC that you might even be able to get, depending on what Ohio State, Michigan, the Met game mm-hmm. looks like. Yeah. Then two and the, two. The loser of that team, yeah, it could just be, a, which is basically where it's trending anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that would only probably enhance like people looking around saying, okay, we've got to figure two big, yeah. We've got two big conferences yeah. here. What about get Syracuse? In line. <laughs> the Cuse. The they Cuse. beat NC State, which... Well, they got to beat Clemson. And, yeah. I mean, uh, Clemson, I think, is actually playing... They're playing much they're better. better. They're getting better. They're getting better. Kudos to them for finally figuring out a way to, to play with DJ Uyunga Lele and figure out what he does best. Uh, oh, they're he, they're getting he just better. just rattled that. It did, wow. man. I'm, I was trying to say it after he said I still could. DJ U, they're getting better. And so, I mean, I think you their defense and their front four especially is, is really, really special. So, uh, I mean, he's still the, recruiting at a high level down there, yeah, right? Well, but the offensive line's had issues. And they're back into their defense. Like Wake Forest, I think, exposed a little bit. Oh. Of what you can do to them if you can throw the football. Yeah, you have to get time to throw the ball because their front four is really, really good. But, you know, it is what it is. My wife texted me on Saturday and was like, how about the Qs? She went to Syracuse. That's the only reason she would have been paying attention to that. She's like, they're unbeaten. And I'm like, no. Back, yeah, no, I, they can't I'm, be. I'm drunk, but not drunk <laughs> enough to believe that Syracuse is Because drunk Purdue to chose to give them the game yeah. at the end. The receiver cho- oh, the tight right, end yeah. chose to like mm-hmm. go over and double bird the corner that he got a touchdown <laughs> on, on after the, after the extra point. So you're kicking off from your five Man. yard line. <laughs> Special teams coach jumps in, gets another fifteen yarder. I'm like, you just Syracuse hadn't th- completed a pass all day. You give them a holding, and then they complete one for forty yards, and they win the game. Win the game, unbeaten, Un- mind orange. Blind. From we talked about in the first half sure. show, just some particular Buckeyes who needed uh, an extra week of practice to get ready for the second half. And obviously there was a lot of injury talk. Was that, was that the case? That was the case. Uh, I, I know that surprises here, Here's you. my choice for that. And it's Michael Hall Jr. Uh, oh yes. Good. Because I, one more injury there, guy. But good. I, I don't think he's actually injured anymore. And so I think it's just an, ex- the ability to use his recovery from second week injury as an excuse to keep him off the field <laughs> is now wiped away. So play the damn guy a lot. Well, I do think this. Like, it's just those things that are nagging. On the table. It, yes. He has something he can play with and obviously be productive, as we right. witnessed. The week before, he played how many snaps? Seven. Seven. No, the week before that. 30. 30. Okay, so he wasn't Against hurt. Rutgers, he Against played 30 Rutgers. Snaps. Maybe, But it could have gotten worse in the Rutgers game. I don't think anybody touched him in that game either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a foot injury. He's a big dude. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I was thinking it was his yeah, foot. Well. It's a shoulder. Oh, I was thinking it was his foot. 
Um, he slipped on her own. I just think that the excuse was he he's coming if, back. If from you're injury. telling us that he also has a foot, then that <laughs> no, I thought no, I'm I'm mistaken that I yeah. I wasn't aware. Yeah. It, it, coming back, saying he's he's been dinged up, but he played 30 snaps against Rutgers. You sort of lose the weight of the argument um, by then saying he only played seven snaps. Against it was Rutgers. a big game, Perm. I, I <laughs> it's a Big Ten conference game. You'd never They're know. They're all big, uh, but. No, I mean, I think Michael Hall, I say that in jest, but I, other than that, I think it's really about uh, Mayan Williams and, you know, the knee issue he has just getting back uh, because for the Buckeyes to win and win convincingly the rest of the year, they're going to need a healthy Trey Henderson and Mayan Williams, I think, because they are as as bad as Iowa's offense is, and it's so, so bad, so bad. Uh, Iowa is, is, is going to be a tough defensive Yeah, up matchup. front. Um, Penn State always plays Ohio State better than they play anyone else, so I expect that one to be physical as well. And then you got Michigan, and then you know you, you got Maryland and Indiana, Northwestern. Some yeah, so you get a couple. Row. You yeah. get a couple. You know, uh, let's say, you know, s- snowball, snow, fl- snow, snowflakes. A couple snow flurries. <laughs> you were gonna have snow snowing and My what? I, I, I'm gonna, I, I got stuck outside? looking at his. I was gonna. Try, I, don't, I, I, I was gonna try it. to. I was gonna try to <laughs> you know, help him, but I had no idea what he was yeah. going for. He had a couple of fluff. I brought games, Berman. You know? He couldn't. He couldn't couple stop couple looking couple at couple it. Couple he didn't couple. want to say fluffer when he couple was looking fluffers. at Jay Z. That's fluffer. really. <laughs> that's really what it came down to. I was looking at Jay Z <laughs> and I was thinking about fluffers. Yeah. <laughs> and so I wanted to avoid bow, saying it. Bow, wow. Oh, good lord! But we said it anyway. Um. The point is, you're going to need the full complement of guys on offense to, to be healthy. And obviously, mm-hmm. Jackson Smith and Jigba getting back, how that rolls into the offense. Um, it has to be about just guys getting healthy. I mean, that's what the whole off week is about. You know what might be interesting is to look at the remaining six games and try to figure out what each one of those teams does best. Yeah. And I, like Maryland has good wideouts. Like, well, they throw the ball around a little bit. Well, that's now totally. Uh, it's maybe, how to a Tito's out. To a Tito could be out for a bit. Um, he went, it was carted off the field on Saturday, so you don't know the severity of that. Yeah, yeah, that's because <clears throat> I was I was looking forward to that. It's yeah. also an annual for the, tradition for Mike Loxley in Maryland to play seven quarterbacks over the course of a year. So we they could be on their fourth. Oh guy yeah, but I was looking forward to Ohio State's defensive backs playing them because yeah, I thought that nice would be test. It'd be a nice right. test. They'll throw the ball up. Guys will have to go make plays, and you get to see if there's been any development. Just the same way as like running the ball against Iowa's offense. Or defense is impressive because yeah. that's they're good at that. So I, I think it's possible to probably do that for just about everybody except Northwestern, mm. which is a complete dumpster fire. No they, study, they study well, no redeeming quality. They're smart. Yeah. They don't, they'll be where they're supposed to be. They're, they're going to be in place. They're going to be where they're, they're supposed be. to be. Are they probably on time too? Maybe so not on time, but they're so going to be. They're going to be working I mean, to get there. Oh, they'll be at the stadium on time. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. They'll yeah. just get yeah. there. Punctual. Punctual. Northwestern Wildcats. Like. The Pat Fitzgerald era is another reminder of like this is what happens when you let somebody stay for past seven years, right? You, I mean, do you think? Pat- I mean, do you think that he won't be able to get that turned around at some point? So, I don't, he, he turns around every three years. That's what I'm saying. There you go. The, I think and they're, they're good with that. I, I think, think they're yeah. self aware enough. What, what's the ceiling they for should Northwestern? Be. No, you're absolutely right. Why? Well, I mean, with are those, they going to get better than Pat Fitzgerald? With those no. facilities in Chicago, they, how do you know? Coach, it's hard to get guys, in, get yeah. guys in. Know, Nobody yeah. wants to go there. I mean, unless they're telling me they're going to go. He- they've got. They've, I'm sure they have a nice, I'm sure healthy endowment. Yeah. I'm sure there's people that in Chicago they're willing to pony up some cash. Unless they're going to go heavy in on the NAL, like this is the ceiling for them. Five and seven, two and ten, seven and you know five, and then maybe they go maybe a nine and three, nine or and ten three, and, two and or it's something. a they catch them in a, a bad point, and you all of a sudden you're in the Big Ten championship game. I just what I don't understand is Nebraska would love to have been in the Big Ten championship well, sure, game I, too the last I, four years. And I don't I'm not saying this because I don't think Pat Fitzgerald is a good coach. I think he's a great coach, and all the things you mentioned are the challenge that he has to face on a year in and year out basis. Like he's a competitor. And he started at a really young age there at Northwestern in, in a situation a that young was lad. difficult. He was a young lad. And he's had, you know, a long time to do this. How much longer does he want to have that exact same challenge, knowing that you're going to have multiple three and nines in there? Like, you can try something else at some point. Like, that's the part. I just think it would be better for try both of them. Try something else. There's things that I like in my life that I'll always like, that I'll always want to do. I don't saying, need a new challenge. Okay. Well, I mean, look, does it, is it, you would get tired of going three and nine. Yeah, but like you think it's not get, every year. I'd though. get tired of putting on pants and maybe one day I just wear a dress. But doesn't but that I make the, doesn't that make the, the, the Well, I every, want you to finish that thought. 
That, <laughs> that's all there is. That's, that's all there's left. Doesn't that make the, the every fourth year nine and three just feel that much better? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you feel like you. I mean, this is where we did it. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah, it's okay. like Wichita State's basketball team. Every fifth Big year, they got seven guys that are fifth year seniors. Yeah. You know, like, hey, this is this team's going to be competitive. Of course, you're all 27 and you're playing against 16 year olds. But hey, whatever. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> okay. Like, I, I guess Pat Fitzgerald can just stay at Northwestern. I'm not saying, yeah, let's keep him there. I'm not saying, like... I think the bigger problem is that Northwestern needs to not be in the Big Ten. Well, that's because it's only going to get more challenging for them. You had Utah and U- US, I mean, uh, UCLA and USC, sorry. And potentially not Utah, Oregon and Washington. Potentially Oregon, like, well, yeah. Then, Notre then Dame how do you fit in? Notre Dame like, eventually. I mean, if you have, like, the nerd... De- the nerd division nerd when Notre Dame gets in, and you got Notre Dame Northwestern. The you geek add squad, in like Stanford. Duke, you throw in. You add Duke and Stanford, and you just call it like, like let those guys play for the academic trophy. Yeah, just <laughs> the knowledge. They play each other each week. I, I mean, if, nobody else. Here's the thing: Does Northwestern do they? They're getting better facilities. And they're doing some things, but have they oh, actively geez. really tried to compete at the level of the rest of oh, the conferences? You, with their academic restrictions uh, are prohibitive. Don't, don't allow that to happen. So. Again, I, it's like Vanderbilt in the SEC. Like, what are you, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, obviously they're doing fine on the baseball front, but you know, you find a niche and you go with it. But when it comes to football, does Northwestern even have one of those? Like uh, any other sport? I'm sure they do something well. I'd like, like probably, to probably, chess. I bet they're like good at like rowing or something. They're right. The on chess the river, team right? is amazing. Great chess team. Great chess. They're right on Lake Michigan. I'm I sure they got like a good rowing team. It's sport. a great. I mean, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that. But yeah. <laughs> see what we would define as their ace in the athletic department. I'm sure they have something. Yeah. Got okay. Got so, uh, we nitpicked a little bit about Ohio State. That's the only thing you can do with this team right now. We talked about the cornerbacks. We didn't talk uh, much specifically about the special teams, which has been by far the worst part of this team so far. Unspecial. What What can or should be done? Parker Fleming and those boys, Bob. Well, I think there's like little things that have done every game. Number one, you know, like Chip Trainum obviously you know, fumbled some balls like that. Not not a great look. Are you saying that it's a bad idea for a current linebacker? linebacker? The guy played running back. I know he did, but he's not, like, catching footballs in practice anymore. Like, he, my he, guy, you would hope he, he was before he they put him out, out there in front of 100,000 people. He out there and They were just like, hey, Chip, we're, you're going to return this one today. <laughs> he feels what? kickoffs in practice. It's, not like it's, it's like, oh, he plays linebacker. Oh, time to go. I'm hey, buddy, over we're here. coming down the tunnel. Uh, you're going to catch his opening hey, kickoff, Tom, by Tommy, the way. <laughs> Tommy, you're backing up uh, yeah. Chip today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're on the KLR unit today. Yeah. It's like that, that's something that was unfortunate. Uh, the, the Mecca fumble, like over the shoulder, kind of ill advised. He misjudged. It was really windy that day. I mean, that's another element in there. So he does, you know, that happens. Obviously, leads the Rutgers you know, first touchdown. Um, it, I feel like they're close on some things. They had some penalties and stuff earlier in the season. I think Barger's a good coach. I think they're doing things the right way. I mean, Ryan's heavily involved in them as well. Like, the, 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 it'll be fine. I, I'm convinced. Some of the things that we've seen have been one-offs that I don't think, unless I see more fumbles in the return game, I'm pretty content to say I think that that stuff's been put to bed, and I think they'll have some explosive gains. I'm more concerned about the way they're covering kickoffs than the way that they're returning them because they're winning 50-7 to seven in all these games, so who cares? Mm-hmm. But like, You don't think they'll be fielding a lot of kickoffs? Yeah, I don't think it matters. But So I, I think it's stopping teams, like, especially when you get to Maryland's, Michigan. Those guys have athletes that are – able yeah. to do some things. They haven't really played those guys yet. Um, you know, Michigan has like AJ Hunting and some of these younger guys that in a game where you're going to have talent equating as we like to be told. Uh, do, we, do we like to be told that? Or I guess do we, we do. Just, no. I like it. But uh, in those instances, special teams will be much more important than anything we've seen so far. So I just got to get better. Plus, I think <clears> one of the biggest issues is they've been so depth deficient at defensive back. Um, so many guys in and out that yeah. you're playing a lot of guys on KOR that you wouldn't normally have out there. That's the one thing that when you bring up, when you start getting decimated at one position, especially at some of the skill positions defensively, those are a lot of your coverage guys. <laughs> yeah, the your fast ba- guys back get down, they're the gunners, so, all those. Yeah. yeah, then you're starting to reach a little bit deeper. I mean, like Xavier Johnson's one of your special teams aces. Well, when he's carrying the ball for you and like getting 45, and listen, they love getting him out there and he loves it, he deserves it. Yeah. But also you need him out there on, on for kick, a certain on job, right? Yeah. To get that done because he's that's what he does and he's the best. What is this team going to do with the wide receiver rotation when Jackson is back? <laughs> Twelve guys. <laughs> I have Take an offensive lineman off. I have a theory about the Blitnikoff award. Let's hear it. Ooh, yeah, let's hear it. They should just give it to like the school. And then each guy can take it home for a couple of days, like it's the Stanley, Stanley Cup. Cup. Yeah. There you go. 
because it's, it's awarded not, to Brian Hartline. Yeah, exactly. Like, Brian gets it as the coach. It's not. It's not really fair, I think, to because we're going to talk about this kid from Tennessee who had the five touchdown game, and all of a sudden that's going to bump him into. Oh, now he's the like. It's just dumb. We know it's the best receiving group in the country. Like, let's just give him the whole award or uh, split it up. Cut it up. Cut it up. Yeah, yeah, cut literally cut it. it into I won a third of the Blitnikoff that year. Like three pieces. It. And that's the thing. Like, that's they're, interesting. It's a victim of success within the room. Like none, none of those guys will individually have the stats that they could have on another team. But I don't think those guys care about individual awards. They do. They're nice. They everybody, you, everybody, to an extent. I, I, like I guarantee you that those guys they would rather they'd rather one hundred percent national championship. The golden, the golden phallus than uh, get the Blitnikoff award. Really well constructed, well thought out trophy design. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's shiny. It's lovely. It's very, very shiny. I mean. Yeah, that's, that's going to be an issue. Like, like, who, who's, who sits? Yeah. yeah, one of these guys mm-hmm. has to come off the field. Yeah, I don't know who that's going to be. Uh, golly. Don't work the rotation through. I mean, Yeah, I mean, but still somebody who is starting is not going who's to be Who's been playing in the slot mostly lately? Has that been Emeka? Emeka, yeah. right. Julian, Emeka. And Julian, Julian and Julian. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, so you can slide those guys. The thing is, what's good is those guys all have, like, great position versatility, so – you know, you can move JSN inside. He can play outside. You can move Emeka inside. I don't think you probably want to put Marvin inside a ton. He can do it. Um, but they have a lot of guys you can But kind Julian's of the same kind of guy, right? He's yeah, a big, Julian's yeah, bigger. He wouldn't be on the outside, so maybe they yeah. just rotate yeah. those guys. And then I think Jackson can do a little bit of both, like Bob said. So maybe that's how they work him in. And Getting Julian back, I think, also helped the rushing attack because he's such a good blocker. Yeah, blocker, right? yeah. Tough, yeah. He's, he's a, a real beast. Dude. I've been, yeah. He's getting healthier every week. You can tell it. He's still not – I don't – he doesn't look 100% to me like some of the – I think that's just the way he runs. But, like, it didn't used to be how he ran. Maybe that's how he ran. This is how it is now. I don't know. but Still pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, he's fast in a straight line, but he's got a little bit of Master T going on right now, mm-hmm. which is not really what you want, um, especially if you're a wide receiver. But He'll be all right. Listen. I, I digress. I think if you get a healthy Jackson Smith and Jigba, you keep Marvin Harrison and Emeka Ibuka and Julian Fleming and all these guys fresh, you just – who cares? Like, just rotate them, and you get great, your catches. You get your great catches. Problem, and, yeah, great conundrum. Give give them each forty reps a game, and be good to go. So I'm saying, like, okay. we're assuming that none of these guys. I mean, tweak an ankle, anything. I mean, it's yeah, nice. One hundred percent. Because as soon as one of these guys, you know, gets nicked for a minute, then you're like, all right, well, now we're back to where we were. And, also, well, and that's yeah, that's with Jackson being healthy the rest of the way too. I yes. mean, hammies can be one of those nagging injuries that sticks with you. So but the question is, in this offense, with as um, much of an affinity that Kevin Wilson and Ryan Day have for running 12 personnel. Like, do you see them trying to do more stuff in the 11 or, you know, putting more wideouts out there or just sticking with what's going on? I think that you're going to see the same level of versatility you've seen because yeah. the, the formation versatility and personnel versatility is what has made this offense tough. Sit there and look at them like, gosh, you do a lot of things. They do a lot of things really well. Mm-hmm. So maybe they do lean into a little more 11, mm-hmm. but I know Kevin and Ryan love 12 personnel. Ryan definitely gets it's an NFL thing. Guys getting that. And if you have receiver or tight ends that can block and that can, you know, be stress matches, stress the field, like Mm -hmm. get them out there and let them go. Bob, I I neglected. We haven't talked about that. Before we get out of here, Bill Zwick's favorite. Bill Zwick's favorite. We got a a Zwick special tomorrow. Fried mushrooms. They're $2. $2, make it holla. On Mm. Appetizer Mm. Tuesday. Mm. Unless Jay Z takes them all home. I'm I'm going to take some home, no doubt. Yum, mushrooms. Those are his ace. He loves them. $2 all favorite. day long? Just $2. At all, your, at all your roosters' locations. I can't ask Nicole about the sourcing issues, but I don't think that there's been a shortage of mushrooms. Not no, yet. Not yet. There yeah, is a new roosters' location opening this week. Oh, is there? Tell us. In Toledo, Ohio, or Sylvania, oh, really? actually. It opens ah. on Wednesday. If you're up in the northwest portion of the state, head over. Sylvania. Berm is cutting the ribbon. It opens actually. on Wednesday night, or it opens Wednesday. I will be there tomorrow night. We got a little, uh, you know, VIP pre. Oh, uh, what? They let Michigan people in there? Yeah, they, invi- they, they invited us. So, uh, we'll, Who did? You know, yeah. I can't. You must know somebody. Something. What is going so on? So, we'll be up there tomorrow. I ain't um, to that uh, you know, Are you going to get some of the nuclear wings? Uh, yeah. Yes, I will. Will you get them doubled with the barbecue sauce? A double. I, I will. Is that your new thing? That's not my Does it help cut the heat? That. That's what I always do. Oh, is it what you want? Like, well, it doesn't it, keep him from crying. Yeah, yeah, he cries all the time. I like the flavor. I like the flavor combination. That's all. Smart uh, to, what's smart to meld things together? Yeah, that's right. What's the score going to be on Saturday? Gosh, can they get to double digits? Ohio State? That's, I, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> I think they will. I'm going to go 45 uh, to 9. Ooh, uh, right on the number there. Love it. Well, he took my 
What's you, the number? Well, you said you were going to get to double digits. You put them all the way up the to nine. The number's 29. I'm not talking about the gambling number. I'm talking about Bob's. Oh. I'm sorry that I made that confusing. Oh. Gosh, you're awesome. 27. Do not make things confusing around He here. said, can they get to 10? As a he gambling all expert, the way I was very confused. Yeah. Noted gambling expert. Noted gambling expert. Jeremy Burmy. Uh, I'm going to say 48 to you give a touchdown. You got to give a uh, touchdown. I'm not gonna, I don't you think only I have can. seven all year. I mean, we just gave up a defensive score. You know what? Two weeks ago, so I don't think yeah. we do that again, right? Mm-hmm. Six. Forty-eight to six. Forty-eight to six. I just can't see them scoring a touchdown. I just don't know scores. how they do it, man. Forty-five ten. Forty-five ten. They have Perfect. five safeties. I was gonna say. So you gave them a score. That's a lot of safety. No, uh, forty-five ten. I think. I think we'll see that leaky issue on kickoff return be the the way Iowa scores a touchdown. This week. Oh, wow, a kickoff return. To the house. To the house. Because even if you give it to him on the 20, I'm not sure. Yeah, I know. Score. Wouldn't give it to him on the five. <laughs> what Berm, do they do? Berm is very concerned about The tighter those windows right? get down it's here. It's been bad. It's been bad. Ohio State will win 38 to nothing. Just just, just a straight walk. up. Just in and out. When was the done. last shutout? It's been a while. It's been a while. Bill knows he's got... He's got the stats because he predicted there were going to be two of them this season. The last one in 2019. Did they get one in 2019? Northwestern could be a shutout. Northwestern and Iowa are this just is, terrible. This Northwestern <laughs> team is. You just hope that it's like snowy or windy or something over there that day. Is that what you hope? That's what you have to open for Northwestern. Otherwise, it's I just, hope it's not. I hope it's, it's already not. miserable going to Evanston. Yeah, Ugh. it sure is. Well, that's coming up. Uh, so <laughs> that's is, something to look so forward to. So is full coverage of Ohio State and Iowa Saturday at noon. In the horseshoe, Fox just could not wait for this matchup. Had to put it's it in the big, big noon kickoff, up. baby. So here we go, back to back noon noon bangers wait, coming. This is the big noon. Oh yeah, the big noon. Oh my gosh, big noon. <laughs> what else is available this week? Must not be much. It's a little bit of slim pickings uh, around college. So Ohio State's playing. I Penn, Penn State weekend. has Minnesota in the in the whiteout. Ooh, um, that would have been a, probably a better atmosphere, in my opinion. But I mean, I'm, I'm not the guy who gets to choose these things. Well, the, the World Series. Did I get Texas Oklahoma State? That would have been the one I would have picked. Yeah, well, they locked this themselves in. Go, yeah. But that's the way it goes. They love Columbus. They, want to get, they, they, they haven't had Ohio State yet, right? Yeah, they, they, now they're getting their fill yeah. as we move forward because uh, ESPN and ABC so, got too much in the first half. I mean, Kansas State, TCU. I mean, I'm not mm. besmirching the Buckeyes. but I mean, I, It's I, like, why did this happen? <laughs> yeah, we don't know either, but we're glad Man, that it's at noon personally. We do? We this will be over by 3.30. Yeah, so at least we have our evenings clear. Yes, exactly. Watch whatever else. That's Jay-Z, Bob, Berm. Thanks for Bill and Nicole Cox for having us in here at Roosters. It's a fun casual joint. Fried mushrooms, they are $2 on Tuesday in the Buckeye Bowl mm. trip giveaway. Make sure you register for that now. There's still six more weeks to win. Bob's scanning his QR code right now. We will see you next Monday. We'll break down whatever happens for Ohio State and Iowa this weekend. Enjoy your week.